Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on chapter 4. We are done with almost all the topics of chapter 4. We are continuing further with the sample questions from the chapter 4 that is deployment risk and contingencies. So here in this chapter we have understood a lot about the task. We have also understood about the deployment of it. We have understood about the risk implementation, assessment, mitigations and also what could be the possibilities of contingencies plan as per the maintenance. So getting started with the first question from in this particular chapter is your team has been working on creating a strong and maintainable task. The task is expected to be used for at least five years, so good maintainability is critical. The team has done the following. So far, the team has done these things. That is created an impact analysis process for all proposed changes to the system, documented the usage for the task, documented the third-party dependencies, including the contacts within the third-party organizations, verified that the task runs in the environment separate from the SUT environment, and given this information, what is the major factor of maintainability that has not been addressed? So if you look at the point, uh, most of the things have been done here, and these are actually supposed to be done as a part of the uh, maintenance, but there's something we are still missing and that we need to understand. So if you see here, we're talking about option A, the task must be modular, so key components can be replaced as needed. Second, the task must be copy of GTAA. So that's another thing when you talk about task must be copy of the test automation architecture. No, task is something which is different than the automation architecture. It's a tool and it must be different from the one which we are talking about. On the other side, we're talking about that SUT must reside in the same environment as that of TAS. Uh, I think that is also slightly different than what we're expecting. The two must reside in separate environment. The SUT is different and TAS is different because TAS itself is a tool and the tool might have a different setup all required and SUT could be in any particular environment again. And D, the TAS must unite the test script with the TAF. Here TAF stands for Test Automation Framework. Now, when you say unite, the task must be separate of the scripts from the TAF. TAF automation framework is different and task is different thing altogether. So finally, what we conclude with understanding of the entire thing that the task must be modular because a modular way will help you to do the maintainability easy. So that's how you can consider the right answer as A. So moving to on to the next one here. So question number two, you have just updated your task to include your new features. What steps should you take to ensure that the changes have not adversely affected any existing functionality? Now here, I think we are talking about the new feature inclusion to the existing uh, in terms of maintainability again. So what steps should you take to ensure that the changes have not adversely affected? So this is point of like the new change, new implementation has not caused any effect to the existing part of it. So the options what we have here is compare the new and old task versions and assess the impact of any differences. So I think that seems to be the most relevant thing because by comparing the new and old task versions, we will be able to get the impact analysis and also we can do the uh, detailed understanding of any differences if caused. So we will still look at the other options. B, statically check to ensure procedures for the new and old task versions are identical. So when you talk about the procedures, Procedures will change as the task changes because task itself is a tool like the automation solution. So of course if automation solution has been updated, the procedures will obviously be different for the new version. So we cannot expect it to be the same at, or identical for the previous and the new version if there are any kind of changes. C. Ensure the same stub and drivers are used in the new task. I think quite similar to the previous option, stub and driver should not be the uh, present in any active task because that could be again like required as per the new version and they're not, not applicable for the previous one. And D is use SUT release notes as a way to ensure the new task will operate correctly. 
I think that's also in credit system release notes of this UT may have nothing to do with identical vulnerabilities in the test. So that could be another complication. So I don't think that is also relevant to us. So the right answer here is A, compare the new and old task versions and assess the impact of any differences. So that's, that's the most relevant thing what we have got to address here. Continuing further, the question number three, why is it important to have standard naming conventions for a task? I think just two tutorials before we spoke about the different considerations and naming conventions for a task. So why it is really important to have a standard naming conventions for a task? Here the option includes A, the task that uses standard names will enable faster execution of the test automation. I think that has nothing to do with the execution process when you talk about the naming conventions. There are several other factors which we can consider about faster execution of the automation. B, a test that, task that uses standard names will be easier for a new person to learn. I think having a standard organization level standard naming convention would help any individual to follow and easily understand the naming conventions or the script which is already prepared. So B seems to be fine as of now. C, a task that uses standard names will support global substitution when test automation standards changes. Global substitution, of course, I don't think that could be uh, anything relevant to the standard naming convention concept because uh, <clears throat> global substitutions could be from different segments, different organization, different procedures altogether. So has uh, not exactly limited to what we're talking about. And D, a task that uses standard names will allow separation of the test script from the TAF. Uh, again, that naming convention has nothing to do with the TAF or the task test scripts. So that could be another thing to, you know, ponder about. So finally, what we conclude is the most relevant option as of now, and the right answer is B, which is a task that uses standard names will be easier for a person to learn. So team, this was the sample question from chapter four. We will be having around 11 questions expected in the examination from this chapter. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'll be there to address your queries and answer them. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the concept. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.